as we come into consciousness more and more, we have a greater responsibility to look at our life in our little corner of the world and say, what am I doing with this? Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. In this episode, we cover astrology, business, and life, including how astrology can help us discover our purpose and path in life, how to deal with difficult transits in your life, and what we're being called to learn as a collective. Our special guest today is Chani Nicholas. Chani is a Los Angeles-based New York Times bestselling author and astrologer with a community of over 1 million monthly readers. She has been a counseling astrologer astrologer for more than 20 years, guiding people to discover and live out their life's purpose through understanding their birth chart. Her app, Chani, offers users a personalized daily understanding of their birth chart. It has had nearly a million downloads and counting since its launch in December 2020. She has been featured in the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Rolling Stone, The New Yorker, Vanity Fair, and on Netflix. Hello, Chani. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I am so excited to have you on. As I was telling you right before this, I have your app and I listen to your astrology workshops all the time. So I'm excited to like get into it. Um, Why don't you tell us your journey to how you became an astrologer? Oh dear. Um, (laughs) I know. (laughs) How long have you been an astrologer? Because I know you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. I mean, I, the first, I've told the story a lot, but the first you can tell, time, make it brief. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I just think people have heard it, but the first time I uh, got an astrology reading, I was twelve, and so that was my introduction to astrology. And I never really stopped learning about it, and I've never not been interested in it since the age of twelve. So it wasn't something that I wanted to do as a career or thought was a good idea as a career. It was something that. I really feel like it it chose me and I really didn't have that much of a choice yeah. around doing it professionally. I mean, were there other options of life paths that you were thinking of taking or was it pretty clear that astrology was like your passion and that's what you should do? Because I'm sure when you started, it wasn't very popular back then, like much less than it is now. Back in ancient times. <laughs> um, I mean, I did a lot of stuff. You know, I, I was not somebody who came from any kind of traditional background. So I didn't follow any kind of traditional path in regards to like education and the job market. I did different things. I I did things inside of the social work realm. I waited a lot of tables. I was a bartender. I was a yoga teacher for about six years. I did Reiki a lot. That was one of the things that I learned alongside of astrology when I was really young. Um, So I kind of had this like, and then I also was, I wanted to be an actress for a while and did a lot of that, some film stuff. So I always had this like need to be artistic or expressive in some way. I was really always interested in activism and how I could affect change, but always through the lens of healing and something to do with creativity. So it wasn't until I started to work astrologically, if you will, that all of those things kind of came together. Wow. I love that. I I mean, looking at what you've built now, like you've, you're such a force, like you've built such a brand and a business online. And I'm wondering, I mean, first I want to know the story of your growth as an astrologer and what, like, you know, the main catalyst for your growth. But I'm also curious, like, how did astrology, like knowing your chart, knowing your transits, like how did that play into your success? Like, cause as an astrologer, do you actually get like you, you get to, you know, make your decisions based on astrology and, you know, when to launch things. Like, I want to know how, how that plays into it. Um, yeah, I definitely, we definitely run our company by astrology. So we only launch things on good astrology. We only make offers for things on good astrology. We only sign contracts on good astrology. We're kind of like obsessed with it. LOL. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so it definitely helps me that way. But 
the, your first question was, how did I get started? How did like, I, I want to know the story of your growth as an astrologer? Cause there's a lot of astrologers out there, but there's only one Chani, right? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, how did this happen? Well, everything happens every day. You know, it's really like a little bit at a time and every day and you just keep showing up. And I had no idea where all of this was going to go. I didn't know what it would all end up doing. But what I I knew at the beginning of writing astrological content and putting it out into the world is that all of a sudden I felt like I was in a relationship with something. And I, it was at a time in my life where I was really lonely. I had, you know, a lot of people, I had a lot of friends, I had community, but I was like deeply lonely. And it's one of the, the overarching themes of my life is isolation and loneliness. And, you know, my childhood wound is abandonment. So feeling like I've been left is something that I've always had to work on and try to heal. And when I started writing astrology, something really amazing happened, which was I felt like for the first time in my life, I was in a relationship with something that was there. I could count on it. It was, it was something palpable. It was something that spoke to me all the time. It was something that I could engage with whenever I wanted to. And it helped me feel like I had a purpose. All of a sudden it was like things kind of came into alignment because I, again, I'd done a lot of different types of work and a lot of it was in healing realms or in kind of like the realms of activism, but it was just never quite right. And I write about this in in my book, you were born for this, but like, I was a really late bloomer. Like it took me Mm. just so long to get into my groove and I didn't, you know, come up and grow up with all the resources that are available now. So it took longer, I think back then too, but there was a feeling of being witnessed in the work itself that I hadn't had in anything else. I felt like I was connected to something within me and outside of me and bigger than me. And that is what I followed. So that was my growth as a person. You could say it was my growth as an astrologer, but it was really my way of beginning to heal myself. And I had been in therapy and I had done Reiki for decades and I had, you know, done the yoga. I had done all the things. I was in recovery groups. Like I had done a lot, but connecting to that piece of myself was the kind of like something that completed the circle of me. And it's not like I'm complete now, but it's like, it finally closed this gap that was just like this wound for so long. Not only the feeling of isolation and loneliness, but the feeling of like, I have so much drive. I've always had so much drive and I just felt like I never had anywhere to put it. And so it just felt like I was spinning my wheels and spinning my wheels and putting my energy into this thing and that thing. And nothing was taking, it was all like, okay, great. That's great. But it's not mine. And when I started writing astrological content, I was like, oh, this is mine. And it's something that I can't really explain. I don't know why. Again, it's, it's, it's not always the most it's not always the easiest way to enter the world because people have so many ideas about astrology and that's fine, but their ideas might have nothing to do with what I actually do. And so I don't like going out into the world and saying like when people, you know, meeting people the first time, they're like, what do you do? It's like, Oh, it's easier to say I have an app than I have, you know, like then I'm an astrologer because there's an idea of, the, there's this idea that I want to tell people who they are, or I'm going to like predict something. And it's such a weird position to be in. And it's so uncomfortable. And I would just rather not, um, I'd rather be in something where people are like, Oh, I know what that is. And just like kind of keep it moving so we can learn about each other as people. Um, so again, it's nothing that I would have picked, but it, it really chose me. And it was the only thing that worked. And as soon as I said yes to it, it just kind of took off and took me on this wild ride. And I met my wife really soon after I said yes to it. And one of my, you know, 
most beloved teachers came into my life around that same time too. And so it was like, when I said yes to the thing, it's like everything started to show up for me. And it really just, it, I, I did like a 180 in my life. Like overnight, my life was different. And wow. I was going through a major astrological transit. So, and for, what was that you know, transit? Those, and when, when, when did this happen? What was that transit that was happening? The, the transit involved Uranus. And so Uranus can be really revolutionary and very disturbing and very shocking. And, and it can kind of reorient you. So I was going through a lot of that. It was connecting to a lot of different parts of my chart. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was, I, I love it was a very lived experience. I mean, for first of all, thank you so much for sharing that, like with the emotion and with the detail, because w- with this podcast, I'm not just trying to like teach basic astrology to the audience. I really want to dig into like, you know, what can the audience learn about how do we tap into our purpose? How can we create our, you know, our best lives, become our best selves? So, so I want to learn that from you, from the angle of your success and, and astrology. <laughs> yeah. It's really why we created the app because I was teaching astrology workshops over uh, online and over Dropbox. And I I kept having to reteach the basics. And I thought, God, it would be so great if this just lived somewhere. And then, you know, my wife, she, she denies this, but it was her idea to build an app. And then we got into it and we were like, oh my goodness, I can't believe we took this on. So there's, there's the, there's the astrology part of it. There's like my life part of it. There's my my business partner, who is also my wife, part of it. And then there's the actual like business of it, which is this whole other beast. But we built the app so that you would have the blueprint of your potential in the palm of your hand. Because I think astrology is one of the greatest life hacks. It's one of the greatest, you know, sources of wisdom. And it is such a shortcut into understanding who you are. So I wrote the book to just be like, okay, let's just start with this framework. It's not just your sun sign. There's these really important pieces that I think are really actually easy to understand. And if you can just situate yourself in them, it will help you understand why you're drawn to certain things, why you're talented at certain things, why you keep having to learn the same lessons, why certain things are so hard for you. And then, you know, the app was like the next iteration of that. Cause then we could have the whole chart in there and it's a wisdom tradition that if you put even a little bit of time into, I think the payoff is so great, but it is a relationship that people have to develop. It's kind of like Myers-Briggs. You just have to understand like mm-hmm. where you are and then you're like, oh, okay, this thing means this. And we wrote the mm-hmm. app in one of the most personalized ways that we could. So we're not just talking about what sign your son is or what house it's in, or even what planet it's talking about. We're also talking about what houses it rules, what house it rules, what house it's like, and the mixture of the two things. So we hope that it gives the most nuanced kind of reading of you and your life's purpose. And you don't have to even know anything about astrology. You could just read through and be like, see what resonates for you. And that's the thing. If astrology works, you actually don't need me to tell you anything. The the astrology itself can tell you something. It's always great to get a reading from an astrologer, but the app itself should tell you quite a bit about your specific makeup. And so we believe in astrology that the moment you're born, there is a marking in the sky that tells us something about who you are, why you came here, what your motivation is, what drives you and how you can best use your gifts. And that's why it feels like it's such a great instruction manual. Yeah. So I don't know why you wouldn't at least try to like, yeah. What does it say about me? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, For people who, cause I, I know in your book, you talk about like the big, the big three, right? That's, is that what you're referring to when you talk about what's your motivation, your drive and what your gifts are? Like, can you maybe be more specific about what in astrology ties to those things? Well, your rising sign will tell you your motivation. Like what, what motivated you to come into this world? Because the rising sign is the point on the Eastern horizon that is rising up the moment that you take your first breath. It is the most personal part of your chart. There is no point or planet in your chart, including your sun, that is more personal to you 
than your rising sign. And this is why. The sky is always moving, right? The sun is always moving through the sky. And therefore, it's not the actual sun. It's the literal, our world is Mm -hmm. shifting. So Mm -hmm. every couple hours, there's a different constellation on the Eastern horizon, meaning there's a different part of the sky that's rising up. And the rising up of the sky is supposed to be synonymous with the, the rising of life, right? And so when we say your rising sign, it literally is the sign rising up. And because it changes so quickly throughout the day, throughout the day, we go through all 12 signs, but it takes a month for the sun to go through just one sign. So again, your rising sign tells you like, this is when I said yes to coming Mm, into the world. This is when I said yes to my life. This is why I, this is what I'm motivated to do. And then the planet that rules that sign tells you about your life's direction, You need to know what planet rules your rising sign and where it is and what it's doing, because that will tell you so much about where you need to go in life in order to feel like you personally have lived a life of purpose. And each one of us, it's different, right? Like it's a different planet. It's going to be in a different place in the chart. So the rising sign sets up the whole situation. It sets up your life. And it tells us the planet that we need to pay attention to. Where is it? What does it want to do? How can I align myself with it so that I can be friends with the planet that's steering the direction of my life? It's like the steers person, we call it. And then the sun and the moon are the luminaries. And light in astrology is so important. So the sun is our biggest source of light. And the moon is our secondary source of light. And the moon reflects the light of the sun. So the sun is the soul, it's like the, the essential self, right? We can think of it as that, like the, the divine mind and the spark that we come in with. It is definitely a very important part of the chart. So it will tell us where we need to shine and what we need to do to feel illuminated with self and spirit. And then the moon reflects that light. And the moon is actually the embodiment of our soul's purpose. So it's our literal body and our physical life. And we need to know where that is as well in order to know how and where to live out our life's purpose and also how to take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves. And so the lights are everything, but so is the rising sign and the planet that rules it. And I found that doing client work for years starting with the rising sign and then going to the planet that rules it tells people so much about themselves that they'll never get from their sun sign. Just, just, you know, say I'm a Scorpio. So what, you know, it's like, yeah, okay. So what? (laughs) It's like, it's a part of you, but we need to know like where everything is and what it's doing and how it's talking to each other. Yeah. And once you know those, it's, so it's like the three things, but it's really almost four because you want to know where the planet is that rules your rising sign. I see. Oh, I mean, I love hearing you describe this. You're like the depth of your astrology knowledge is so uh, it's amazing cuz I I've been studying astrology since 2018, like just reading books in here, but but it's I don't know. It, you, the way you describe things is, is really special, I think. Um and it brings me to the teachers. app. Yeah. It brings me back to the app because are you like how much work goes into it? And how, what's your process of doing all these readings? (laughs) Like, Um, is it, does it take a most of your time and who's doing all the writing? Do you have help? (laughs) Oh my God. We have, we went from a team, we launched the app and we were a team of four people and we're now today a team of 26. Oh, wow. So in a year and a couple months, that's how much we've grown. And it's amazing because we used to do everything. <laughs> and now we have a team of like, you know, a couple dozen people and it still feels like maybe it's not enough. And it's like, not that I did as much as gets done now, but we used to do all of those jobs. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's an amazing feeling as an entrepreneur for anybody out there that has their, their own business. You start out and you are just every single role. Like you just, it's your passion. It's your love. It's, the you bringing yourself into the world in a way that's really exciting. And it is absolutely unsustainable. You know, like the launching energy is very different than the sustaining energy. And the launching system is very different than the sustainable system. 
So we have an amazing um, like creative team and that's pretty much my department. And then the tech team is pretty much my wife's department. So, I mean, we've just got so many people doing so many things. I do the readings every week and also readings for the year and I'll write the year ahead horoscopes and I'll write things every once in a while for the website. But I've got a whole creative department that writes other things that are weekly or a horoscope or whatnot. So in, in a way, it's like I really miss the writing that I used to do. And you just can't do it all yeah. in the it's same a lot way of that content. you used to do it. It's yeah. a lot of content. Everything's always moving. <laughs> right. I mean, with another question, because you talked about the energy and the process to sustain is different, right? So is this something that, I mean, my question is, as you know, in astrology, you're always evolving and you're going through changes. So how do you deal with like sustaining a business when you're going through like personal changes? And like, is there a time when you think that like you'll step out and not run everything and, you know? Just wondering. Okay. So the question is, how do you be a human and run a business? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have any outside funding. We have no VC money. We poured all of our own money from the business into the app and we will never take VC money. It's, we don't want to work for other people. We also want folks to know that we're never going to sell the app. We're not going to sell people's information. This is something that is owned by us and it's our project. And it's, we're not trying to appease some investors anywhere and trying, we're not trying to make back, you know, the money that people gave us. So we're a really different kind of business model in that way. This app is us. This is our vision. The way we run the company is completely on our own terms. We pay people what we think is fair. We have a work culture that we hope is healing and just. We give benefits that we hope are fair and healing. And we would like to change the industry standard for what it means to work at a company. We really believe in having our work life and our, our workplaces be as fulfilling and, and nourishing as the rest of our lives should be because we work so much and we, you know, we work together so much. And so, you know, our team is just incredible. They're such an amazing group of people and they're so sweet to each other. And it's such a beautiful, um, collaborative process. It's stressful and there's a lot of hard work that goes on, but I, I feel like we've, we have this really gorgeous like way of being with each other. And I feel like it's also unfortunately quite rare. Um, and so how you be a person and you run a company is you be a person and you run your company. So I'm going through things, they're going through things, we're going through things. Everybody's got life. And when we come together, we're just normal humans. And we talk about what's happening with each other. We're not no one's asking us to show up perfect. Um, I believe that, you know, there's, there's times of course, where you need to take a sabbatical or where you need to change your focus, but I don't believe in like stepping out of life in order to heal or to like deal with things. Like it's all part of it. And so it teaches me like the business teaches me so much about how to be a leader, how to be patient, how to be a good cheerleader, how to set good boundaries, how to encourage the best out of people, including myself. I've changed so much since this business has really like come into its own. And I just, I learn so much every day. So it's, it's not separate from me. It is me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know how else to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I can feel that too. Like you guys make it known that you really care about your employees and the way you run your business is different. Like it's, it's more human and you, there's more care that goes into it. Um, so I, I really applaud you for that. I think it's amazing. 
Um, my next question is just the fact that, you know how astrology is becoming more and more mainstream? Like people are going beyond horoscopes. Astrology is huge on TikTok. I want to know what are your thoughts on that? And what is your hope for the future of astrology? Like what do you hope it becomes? I don't know if I have any hopes for it. I, I don't, it's, it should do what it does. I trust it. It will stick around for the time it needs to stick. It'll go underground again at some point, maybe 50 years from now or a hundred years from now. It'll, it's always been there. It will always be there. It's having a moment. It's had many moments over history. This is just the process. And we're having a very different moment with it because we have technology and social media and we get to advance our understanding of what it is really rapidly, which is exciting and also can be problematic because we can know just enough to be dangerous, but also it's totally fine. And so it's just all a circus, you know, like all of life is just like this wild <laughs> circus. And then you throw capitalism in there and it gets weird and, <laughs> and it, it does what it does, but it's okay. It's, it's part of the messiness of this world. Yeah. Um, and I just do what it tells me to do. I think it's, my business is my life and everybody, what everybody else does is their business. Right. Right. I mean, I, I guess what I was going with that question is you don't hope that people learn to integrate it into their lives more or become more popular or are, are you, you're just kind of like open, like it exists if it'll help people that want it to help and it won't help people that don't, don't care about it. I, I really just trust that it does what it needs to do. I love that. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's just not, I don't, I don't know. I don't have, it sounds funny to say this, but I don't have any skin in that game. I'm doing what I feel like I've been directed to do and I'll do it for as long as it works. And then once it stops working, I'll do the next thing. I hope that what we do and what we produce is healing and helpful and practically useful for people. And that's my greatest intention for the business. Awesome. Um, I also got a chance to like check out your Netflix series, Star Power. I think it's so fun when you're reading celebrity birth charts like Jane Fonda, a Amy Poehler. Um, who is your favorite celebrity to read for? Just curious. Oh my God. They've all been so gracious. I mean, like putting yourself in that situation. Everyone is such a great sport. Like I'm always so shocked that they're willing to come on and do this. And I've had so many just like amazing moments that either made it in or didn't make it into the final pieces, but it's just been so illuminating for me to get to sit with the person that we know through their work and then have their chart beside that so for me, I've learned so much from each and every chart that I've done yeah. just as I an mean, astrologer. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, like, are there things in the chart where you're like, okay, this is very obvious. Like this person was meant to be a star or, I mean, what, what can you see in the chart and what did, what did you learn? Like meeting the person? Um, well, hopefully you see the mark of their life. Right. So whether that's about being a star or whether that's about bringing pain to light or whether that's about being, you know, particular and specific and funny and there's, there's different, everyone has their own specific thing. Right. Um, so when you're looking at somebody's body of work and then you're also looking at their chart, there's a way in which you can be like, oh my God, I can't believe you have this signature. And then you also did this project that literally has the same name as this astrological signature and you just see like how we have free will but do we like there's yeah. this way in which we're kind of marked from the mm -hmm. beginning and we live it out in the way that we want to but the mark is the mark but it's you no know? like it was in the chart rare. the whole time yeah right. and that's what you chose to do with it and you chose to take it as far as you did mm -hmm. but like you literally you know, like Jane Fonda has Industria, the asteroid Industria on her ascendant. And she literally launched an entire industry. She, there were no workout videos before Jane Fonda. So like the mark of being an industry or being industrious is literally on her ascendant, which is the yes and the motivation for living. And I'm not saying that she's like been motivated her whole life to begin new industries, but 
that's what she ended up doing just because she was being herself. Yeah. So it's wild to see that. I think that's wild too. Let's explore that. Yeah. What is your thoughts on free will versus like your, you know what I mean? Do we have free will within the range of our chart or I don't know. What do you think about that? Exactly what I just said. (laughs) Do I, you know, that's it. Do we? (laughs) Well, yeah, you have free will right in this moment, but you're in a specific place, in a specific body, at a specific time. You didn't get to choose that. Yeah. You don't get to choose your family. You don't get to choose the city you're born in. Like all that stuff is like part of your fate. And the astrology is the same way. It's like, well, you're made up like this, but you get to say what it is you're going to do with it each and every day. But the ingredients are already predetermined. Right. So would you say there, there is a right or wrong way to live your life, depending on whether you want to live aligned to your ingredients versus not? Cause what happens if you don't follow, like, do you feel like it's impossible to not live according to your chart <laughs> or do you meet people who do something completely opposite than what they're supposed to do? Listen, everything is part of your path and everything is part of your life's purpose you can use it all. And there's different ways to use this. This is a mason jar. I have water in it right now, like every other person in America. Um, But you could grow a plant in it. You could smash it against a wall and create chaos. You could do a lot of different things with this jar. And none of them are right or wrong. They're just choices. So you can't do your life wrong. There's just the choices that you make and the lessons you learn from that choice. And that's it. And I think that the chart holds a commentary on the style within which you'll do those things. And it holds a promise that you can do different things with these ingredients. It's kind of like, I don't know, don't they have that on like, whatever master chef or like everyone gets the same ingredients and uh, you make different things with it. Yeah. You make it your own and that's your self-expression. Yeah. And you, so you've got these ingredients, but you get to choose how long you want to make something that tastes horrible. Mm. You can change the, the recipe mm-hmm. any, at any point in your life. It's the same ingredients, but you can change the way you work with them and make something extraordinary. And it's all part of your process. So my job is to say, these ingredients are what you start with. And these look like the places that you need to move into. But you can move into those places in a lot of different ways. You can move into them destructively. You can move into them creatively. You can move into them with self-doubt. You can move into them with arrogance. You can move into them in a lot of different ways. But these are the spaces that you will occupy in your life. So there's, there's nothing wrong. You, you can't not live it out. But what I do see is people having a dream and having a profound desire to do something and pushing it to the side. And then they come for a reading and I'm like, this is the thing. <laughs> and they're like, how did you know that? I've, I've not, it's like me, like I didn't want to do the astrology. Right. But it's the thing. Yeah. So when I said yes to it, everything started working. Was everything before that wrong? No, it helped every, it informed everything. If I could go back in time and be like, look, <laughs> work on these. Things. Yeah, I would coach myself to like get there quicker, but that's whatever. It's a moot point. Yeah. So what I know to be true is that your chart says yes to you when, especially in ways that you might have been trained to say no or to deny yourself of something, the chart says, no, 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 go there. That's your thing. And when you, if you're a kind of person that's, that's pushed that away or not given yourself permission, then that can be revolutionary. That is radical self-acceptance. That's the beginning. Yeah. That's beautiful. Cause I I do feel like a lot of the listeners are young and probably 
you know, ha- either going through or have experienced feeling lost in their life yeah. and not knowing what to do. I mean, we all experience that. Yeah. And you're saying it's there. Like you might yeah. even, you might even like it's don't right realize you're pushing you. it away, but it's there. You just there. have to be able to see it, which can be hard for people because they don't know where to start. But yeah. And you, you know, I say that if I could go back in time, I would coach myself to do it quicker, but that's also not true because everything had to happen in order for me to get where I needed to go. And I needed all of those steps to get there. So it's really hard to trust the process when we feel lost, but that's the point. The point is like being lost is a really important part of our process and it never totally goes away. It'll always come back. There's always a part of creating ourselves and our life that is going to feel confusing, disorienting, and chaotic. And that's supposed to be. It's just that we have to develop the coping skills to help hold ourselves through that discomfort. And that's the, that's the work. The work is developing the coping skills. And sometimes when you go into the astrology of everything, it can be a real comfort because you're like, oh, no wonder I feel lost. Neptune's on my, you know, Mm -hmm. or like something's happening to me. Okay, how else can I use this transit? What else does Neptune mean? Or what else does Saturn mean? Or what else da 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 da? And it gives you options to be like, okay, this is a difficult situation. What are the tools that are also connected to this kind of difficult astrological moment that, and it helps me at least to be like, okay, I've got free will, I've got agency. And I think that's what I'm always trying to help people get to is you have agency always, 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 always about how you are relating to yourself internally. And we can always count on that. And if you connect in that place, It can be a remedy for so much because in the world, we might not have a lot of agency, but we do have it somewhere inside ourselves and our relationship to ourselves. And I think the chart and astrology, if it's your language, if it's something that appeals to you, can help us reconnect to it. It's odd because it's like, well, it's telling you about a period of time or the quality of something and you don't have the power to change it. It's like, that's true. We don't, we don't actually have the power to change people's minds or, you know, it's like, it's not, it's also like, that's not our work to do, but our work is to be like, okay, this is where I am. What can I do from this point? If I accept where this point is, what tools do I have available to me? And then moving from there. Yeah. And when you say tools, do you mean like it, those tools have to relate to the planet, like that of the transits you're going through, or do you You just mean like mental health coping tools? I want you to use any tool and every tool that you have access to. (laughs) I see. Yeah. I I think, I mean, because, because I'm personally going through like a difficult transit in my life, a long one, like Pluto squaring my sun and Mercury. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. (laughs) You have a... It's you a, have a, a it's cancer long Capricorn. One. Oh no. What what do you mean? For which one? You, what sign is your sun? Oh, I am a Libra sun. So Libra, Libra. my sun and Mercury are like Cassini, I think it's called. And Ooh, then Pluto. Nice. And then my Venus is not far away. It's like essentially oh like together in Libra in the fifth house. But they're and all so at the end of Libra. I don't know. Like yeah, around 21, 20 something degrees. But yeah, Pluto is apparently squaring that. Well, and it's I just degree though. Because Pluto's at the end now. Yeah, I think it, I don't know. I have to check. I'm not I should have got your chart before we did this. I'm going (laughs) to, I'll send it to you if you still want to look at it afterwards. But, but I, I think it's just, you know, people go through difficult transits and like when you're in the middle of things that are long, maybe like a Saturn return or, or, you know, difficult, difficult things happen. Pluto's longer, but yeah. (laughs) I know. I know. (laughs) So I think yeah, the question so, is like, just how do you deal? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if it's, a, I'm also in some pretty big Pluto transits with Pluto, you say, okay, what do I give up? And you sacrifice things. You can literally do like a ritual to sacrifice and you clean and clear thing. Anything that you have agency over cleaning and clearing out, you do. Cause Pluto is the kind of planet that comes along. It's like, 
what can you not live without? And you say like this thing, I can't live without this thing. And then Pluto says, great. I would like, I'm, I'm going to take that. <laughs> it like strips you down in a way. Uh, yeah. And it's asking for you to get in touch with the power in you that has nothing to do with external sources, it has nothing to do with external validation, it has nothing to do with worldly accolades. And that's hard, you know, so it also is like, can bring us through a kind of hell realm, but it's asking for something to be like composted, rotted, boiled down, put in the cauldron and like boil in and then come into something else. It's very Phoenix from the flames yeah. kind of thing. So that's the homework assignment. So in my Pluto stuff, you know, where it's connecting in my chart, it's like, I can see like all that stuff is radically changing. Like, oh yeah. That changed. And then that changed. And then that changed. And, you know, thank God I didn't have to do much with it. It was already kind of happening, but it is a sacrifice of what was. You can't take everything with you. If you want to change, you have to be willing to walk out of whatever part of your life is rotting, is no longer, you know, the thing. It's like, we all yeah. know those metaphors, but yeah. to live yeah. it is something totally different. It's yeah. ugly. Pluto gets yeah. you to like grapple with all of the stuff that you can't put on social media. <laughs> yeah. It, it's crazy that you think life is good and then it keeps changing and evolving and you keep learning new things, but that's life, right? <laughs> life is great. It's not yeah. static. Exactly. Exactly. And life is also a horror <laughs> and that's also not static. Mm -hmm. It's gruesome. I mean, mm -hmm. life is predicated on death. It's not uh, Libra might have someone with a lot of Libra might have a really hard time with Pluto. <laughs> yeah. Because Libra wants everything to be harmonious like, and balanced. Like beautiful and yeah. Beautiful, <laughs> peaceful. Lovely. Yes. Yeah. Peaceful. Yeah. Let's like yeah. chill, man. Yeah. And then Pluto's like, let's rip it all apart and expose all of the underbelly of the situation. And that's not, so it really puts you through. Yeah. So the interesting. Test. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. I think it's, I'm happy that I learned about astrology and recognize, okay, this is happening instead of just like, oh my God, my life is like, you know, just falling apart. I, exactly. I think yeah. with astrology, at least you have some awareness of what to right. expect. And I think that's how it helps. Yeah. And I think it f helps you. I don't know. You can tell me, but it, it helps me feel less alone. Like, yeah. okay, there's, this is being reflected by this cosmic order and I'm feeling the, the reflection. I feel like it's happening here on earth. It's happening in the sky. There's a mirroring going on. So maybe, maybe it's not all in vain and maybe it's not just because life hates me. Maybe there's something else that's trying to work through me and teach me and what comes on the other side of this. The, the, you know, at the end, Pluto is like, the redemption, you know, the phoenix yeah. rising from the ashes, but it's got to burn first. So yeah. and turn into ash. And that whole process is really gnarly. And and, and when you, you don't feel it every day. Yeah. It's a slow, long transformation. So, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. your, it becomes your new normal kind of. Yeah. But do you uh, feel like you're getting more in touch with your actual power that, as a human, as a I being. think so. I think I've let go of a lot of like caring about external validation and it, it, I'm still going through it. And it's, you know, it's, it's phases. It's it, I, like, I can't really put a finger on what's changing, but I, I do know I'm different than who I was two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, when you talk about this metaphor, it kind of reminds me of the world too. I'm sure there's an astrology of the world and what we're going through. It's a difficult, <laughs> it's been difficult for all of us, right? What do you see with that and where are we headed <laughs> <laughs> in terms of astrology for, I don't know, the next year or so? Well, there's the transits that we go through collectively as a globe. There's the transits that we go through individually as a country or this country or that country. There's the astrology that we go through as humans. So the astrology that we go through 
collectively, you know, there was like this really abysmal moment of astrology that all, all the astrologers were talking about. And it happened in January of 2020. Mm -hmm. So that really intense astrological setup was happening, mirroring a very intense moment for the entire globe. And so you see that and you're like, okay, well that makes its mark and it makes its mark for like the decade. You know, it's not just like one day or a week or a month. It's like, this is going to, this is going to roll out for years. Whatever happens now is going to like impact us for a long time to come. So we're still in that, you know, it's like, it's not like that has all of a sudden changed. And now we get to, unfortunately, we don't just get to move out of it. So we're still in that very particular, it's called Saturn-Pluto conjunction moment that happened in January of 2020. And then there's some really big changes that happen in March of 2023 that I've got my eye on. What so is I that? know there's going to be some very important global moments that will occur at that point. And then what I'm looking at in terms of this year for the rest of the year, and I don't, I'm not trying to be like fear-based or anything, but th there's a very challenging Mars retrograde coming up at the end of the year. I know there's Mars a lot of retrograde. retrogrades coming up, right? Like there's a Saturn, there's Jupiter. I don't know. I I mean, okay, look, this is oh, a great, you think great question. Hard is, okay. A lot of planets are like retrograde for half of the year. So Planets being retrograde is not a big deal if it, we're talking about Pluto or Uranus or Neptune and Saturn and even Jupiter, right? So that's a Why? lot of planets. They're retrograde a lot of the year. So it's not a big deal. But when Mars retrogrades or when Venus retrogrades, because it's less frequent, well, because they are usually fast moving planets and they move through signs so quickly. And then when they retrograde, like Mars will stay in Gemini for seven months. Whereas usually it's in a sign for like six, seven weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we know that, and Mars is a planet of conflict and aggression and sometimes war and like harm and spicy things and things that bring heat and brings that things that bring division. So whenever Mars goes retrograde, you can know like, oh, that's going to be a prickly point of the year. That's not going to be fun. And it's going to retrograde in Gemini, which is all about our conversations and our communications. Uh. So it feels like a time where discourse might be a little extra challenging for us all. It enters Gemini in August and it stays there until March. Um but it will be retrograde the end of October, November, December, and half of January. So, you know, I'm looking at this part of the year and being like, okay, it feels a little extra edgy, a little extra challenging. Are we going to be having conversations communally that feel really aggressive, hot topic argumentative? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem with asking an astrologer that is they're going to tell you about all of the ominous things to come. Um, <laughs> there's I mean, bright I'm moments. Curious. There's, yeah. there's bright spots and there's, there's things to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the very difficult task of coming to conscious awareness as human beings about our impact on ourselves, each other, and every other living thing. And that is not going to go away regardless of what the astrology is. So our main task is to be in this moment with as much awareness as possible and to know that as we come into consciousness more and more, we have a greater responsibility to look at our life in our little corner of the world and say, what am I doing with this? this one precious life, how am I using this life, energy, resources, talent, relationships to create healing, to make things 
more gen- to live in a generative world that isn't all about the destructive forces of humanity and the psyche, but is also about the regenerative forces. Like we need both that things have to decay and rot and just, you know, get disintegrated, but we've, we're out of balance with this destructive aspect of ourselves and psyches. Mm -hmm. So we need to like bring in the more regenerative, like, and transformative and healing approaches of how we work with these different parts of ourselves and how we find our way forward. Cause we all know we're in this very precarious moment and it's not like humanity hasn't been in it before, but I think the environmental degradation is a different kind of signal that we have to contend with. So we've really, we've really done it now. <laughs> we, we have to be in this, we have to be radically awake here and say, everything I do with my life matters. It does. It just, it's like, it's important. I'm a speck of sand on a little, you know, dirt ball in the cosmos. Like, what does it all mean? But everything I do is the most important thing that I can do. Mm. today and every day, just a little bit at a time. So when you talk about like the big astrological things, it's easy to get doom and gloom about it because that's, you know, like we're in this thing about we're trying to come in. I think we're trying to come to consciousness. Like how do we not end up in war all the time? Yeah. How? We can feel it. It's like, we're always at the precipice of that. How do we not do that? So I don't know if that answers yeah. any of your questions. It no, it it does. It's almost like I, I mean, when all these world events happen, so, I think sometimes people feel powerless, like oh, it's so out of my control. Which you know, it, it does, it is out of our control. But at the same time, we are part of the collective, and you're saying we do have the power, and we have to be aware of the small part we're playing in this big this big picture. It's almost like these, the, the bigger macro astrology is what we all have to learn together at the same time. You know, we're all learning daily things in our own lives that are not, you know, not everyone's learning the same lesson at the same time, but the world collectively, we have to learn these bigger lessons together. Right. And that's what I'm interested in. I want you to learn about yourself and I want Mm -hmm. you to be invested in your own healing, but then what? Yeah. Then, then you part- I want you There's to something engage. else to participate in. Yeah. Engage yeah. with the healing of the world. That yeah. is our job. Ooh, I love that. I and you can't fun. do one without the other. As you mm-hmm. heal yourself, you are engaged in, in, as you engage with the healing of the world, you will be healed. Yes. And we need both sides of that equation all the time. I have this oh my quote God, yes. behind me in Hebrew that in the translation says the work is not yours alone to do, but it is important that you do it. It's not all about you. You don't have to carry the whole world, but you got to do the thing. Right. I love it. And there, you know, there's this beautiful creation story in mystic Judaism and the Kabbalah and the Kabbalah. It's about the creation of the world. And it's the part of the story goes that, you know, in the beginning, God was like chilling in this, in the great dark void as she does. And then, you know, gets interested in creating the world. And so says, let there be light. And the light comes through. And then God puts the light in these vessels. And the light is so brilliant and so magnificent and so powerful that it shatters the vessels. Or we could just say the vessels shatter. And it's said in that myth and that tradition that the shattered pieces, all those little shards of glass of light have been spread across the world and they're in me and they're in you. And our job is to go into the world, into our lives and into ourselves and find that little shard of light, that little fragment of light and to see how we might put them together. And every time we find this little bit of light and hold it up for the world to see, and we proclaim it as holy or as healing or as light itself, we're part of the healing of the world. So our job isn't to put everything back together again. 
Our job isn't to figure it all out. Our job is to find these little moments of holiness, of divinity, of healing, and say, this is what I have. This is what I found. And then you can say, this is what I found. And then we can see (laughs) what happens when we all are hunting for that, is discovering that within ourselves and each other. That's so beautiful. I love it. So it, it... it makes me feel more connected and it it's a reminder that as we heal ourselves we heal the world and we're all we're all going through this learning through learning through this together. Yeah, and I think we have to be really intentional though mm-hmm. about having the self-healing move into community healing because we can't actually heal ourselves if our communities are broken. Okay. If our world is, you know, it's like mm. community is healing is a communal act. I can't be okay if my neighbors are starving. What good is it if I can do yoga Mm -hmm. at like a nice location and nobody else, you know, it's like really we have to also be thinking like the systems are caused of the systems that cause harm. How do we interrupt that harm? How do we reduce that harm? How do we make it so that it's almost impossible not to heal, right? Like we set up systems and workplaces and schools and community centers that are focused on creating spaces that are already healing. It's going to happen naturally. So as we come into any kind of wellness, it's like, how does that then really thinking, how does this then transform the world? Because I know, you know, a lot of people can get stuck in the bubble of self-care and it right. doesn't translate necessarily to the rest of the world. I see what you're saying. It just yeah. promotes more privilege. Right, right. So it's not just about yourself. It's also thinking about the community and the system you're in. And, and I mean, the immediate example is like, like I have a friend who is a teacher to elementary school and she's like infusing like, like consciousness and mental health in what she does, like teaching the meditation. And I think that's, that's beautiful. Like we just need more people to like, infu- like that intention behind everything they do it, in that small pocket of influence you have. Yeah, right? and we do, but also yeah. the system, the education system should be healing in mm-hmm. and of itself. Yeah. What if we had an education system that was free and focused on the mental, emotional, spiritual, physical well-being of the children that went there? What would that do? I mean, so yes, your friend is amazing and sh- they shouldn't be they shouldn't be an anomaly. Right, right. Thank yeah. thank goodness they're there and uh, you know I hope they're getting paid and all, all that <laughs> stuff. But like, you know, like... Yeah, it, I know what you mean. It has to happen on all levels. Yes. There's mm-hmm. that There's that other parable about like, you know, do you catch the... Do you, do you stand downstream and take the babies out of the water or do you go upstream and realize why they're getting there in there in the first place? And we need both, right? We need like yeah, the immediate, yeah. like, okay, get the, you know, make sure that you save the vulnerable, save the, mm-hmm. you know, that are in the dire situation, but we have to go upstream and say, what the is going on? <laughs> yeah. Who's doing this? Yeah. What is, why is this? Yeah. And so it's, it's both. We, we always need both. Mm-hmm. Love it. Um, do you have any lasting pieces of advice you want to share with our listeners? It could be astrology based or ge- in general. I feel like we were just talking about life now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, see if it resonates with you. Read about your rising sign and find out what planet rules your ascendant. What house is that planet in? What sign is it in? What other what other planets is it talking to? You? You can do that in the app. It kind of lays it all out for you and see if it gives you any additional insights or aha moments. And it's really about like, you know, if you go into the Chani app and you read all about your chart, it's like, take what you like and leave the rest. It's not everything's for you, but like, is there something in there for you that helps you to connect the dots in yourself? And if it does, does that help you to accept yourself more radically? 
And if that happens, are you able to move into your life with less doubt and more of you? And then if that happens, you are an unstoppable force in the world, I think. And then you go forth and you make change Mm -hmm. in the way that you are supposed to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much, Chani. Lastly, where can we find you online? So you can find me online at ChaniNicholas.com or any of the social media uh, apps. Same thing, Chani, C-H-A-N-I-N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S. And then the app is just my first name, C-H-A-N-I. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're so inspiring and empowering. I love what you do. Just thank you for being your fragment of light (laughs) and sharing that. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. 